we told you we could show you how to gain mystical business superpowers and manifest profits like a wizard. Many have cracked the metaphysical money code and we are spilling all the secrets in this episode. Well, maybe not all of them, but we're going to spill a bunch of them. <laughs> and think, think earning profits through magical means is impossible? Oh, what are Gary and Ross talking about? Well, in this episode, we'll prove even to the biggest skeptics that it's possible. And you'll learn how to tap into an infinite pool of realities and channel profit-boosting secrets into your business. Then we'll share some simple metaphysical hacks to open cash portals in your business and and, and to take it uh, uh, to levels of success you never knew about and beyond. So get ready for your reality, reality to be rocked. Okay, now that you've gotten a glimpse behind the curtain of our metaphys metaphysical live stream episode, <laughs> let's dive deeper down the rabbit hole and let's see where it takes us. Stick around for the whole stream uh, because as we will be giving you some step-by-step -step strategies on how you can actually tap into profitable super power, supernatural power, business powers you never knew you had. And level up, finally, level up your entrepreneurial game forever. Okay? And did you know there's a force, an energy, that is woven through the universe, and it connects everything to everything? Okay? Now, we find that most think of their personal life as a, as a spiritual entity, and then it stops there. But it doesn't. This energy interweaves through all our existence, wh whether it be your personal life or your business life or your dog's life. Okay, we are we are more um, more than most imagine. And with this in mind, it isn't it logical to then assume that. The same connectedness that we use to interact with our families and friends can be also utilized to connect with business associates and clients as well. Now, in previous live streams, uh, you know, we discussed the art of Ho'oponopono, right, where they refer to this, this ethereal connection as they call the Aka Chords. OK, a, a, it's almost like a telepathic connection to everyone we meet or get in contact. And it's not limiting ourselves to certain individuals. And and if that's true. Then isn't it plausible that the same telepathic connection or ACA cords can aid in your business transactions as well? I mean, after all, businesses are about people meeting people in one way or another, aren't they? So today's live stream, we'll cover the untapped power you already possess to become, to, to better connect, to better communicate, and to better negotiate with others. So whether it's for your business or your personal, this is going to be a real treat today. All right. So tell us, as you, as you chime in, tell us in the comments where it is you're tuning in from. Okay, go ahead and let us know in the comments, the city and, um, and, and, and state or province or country that you are or you're tuning in from. Uh, it's good for us to kind of see who's there, as well as for you to see the connections that you are having through this virtual experience called the live stream event. Okay, we really, we really are strong and, and passionate about creating community. And that only happens if you guys participate. So go ahead and drop a city, state, and or country um, and, and let us know in the comments. And if it's your first time, drop a hashtag first time in the comments, okay? If it's first time to us. And then Ross and I will come back around and, and uh, you know, properly greet you into the group and anybody else that's that our regulars are, see when you see that as well, it's for our first time, Go ahead and, and welcome them in as well, okay? 
And if you're watching watching this on the replay, because we get a lot of you guys watching it on the replays, um, go ahead and type a hashtag replay. It doesn't take much. Come on, you're there. You're watching it anyways. Hashtag replay so that we know that you're watching it. So we know that you're here and you're participating. And also, we'd like to interact with you as well. All right. And um, also, let's also remember that we do have two super popular private groups. Uh, number one is Evolving Reality Within the Infinity Matrix, uh, where we cover mm, mysterious realms of the esoteric, if you will. Okay. And then uh, Expanding Beyond Business Mastery is where um, we, we blend together business and the metaphysical, kind of what we're doing today, but we do it on a, on, on a broader, longer scale uh, in that uh, group. Now, I'm just taking a look to make sure that we are, everything's get ready to go here. Great. And we'll hand it off to you, Ross. All right. So today's fun. Today is just going to be a blast. So today we're going to talk about the evolution of the human species, but, but in a different way. So we'll speak about how we have evolved and how we can reconnect to the original human blueprint designed within us, a design that, that all humans were meant to have. And as society has progressed and become more complicated, and have allowed more and more technology to do the work for us, whether it be physical or mental, we, be, we began to de-evolve. And many of you here, probably all or all of you are here or have begun to realize this. And if not, perhaps, well, perhaps you felt it. Felt that there's a, a disconnect or a unconnectedness for that matter. So, as opposed to psychology, metaphysics is the branch of philosophy that deals with the nature of reality, such as the concepts of being, of existence, causality, and identity. So metaphysical practices are ways of applying the metaphysical principles to everyday situations, like decision-making, problem-solving, creativity, even communication. And today, we'll explore some of the metaphysical practices that can be used in your daily business routines and how they can benefit your personal and professional growth. You know, in our years of, of practice in this arena, we have found that there are so many souls looking for connection, looking for connection with the universe, looking for connection with others. A connection that you can forge that allows you to do so much more. Because when you utilize these innate skills and these talents, this intrinsic superpower that you have within you, you think you're magic. And you know you are. You are magical. Because you were born with superpowers or at least born with the ability to utilize them. But in most cases, well, we kind of lost the user's manual. It's missing. We don't know where it's at. So let me give you an example. Um, you know when somebody can come up behind you and you don't actually hear them, but you feel them, you sense them? And I know that science explains it away as micro sensations that you may have heard, you may have heard something, you may have felt the air move, whatever the case may be. But what about when they are about six feet away and you feel them or sense them? <clears throat> or even when they're at a distance that you can't even see them, but you know that somebody's there, you know that, that somebody's watching you. You have that feeling, right? What if you can I just interject here, Ross? For those yeah. of you that are like questioning even that, check out Rupert Sheldrake okay. stuff. Okay. Oh yeah. Just check oh, out yeah. Rupert Sheldrake and the and the amazing stuff he's done experimentally with with exactly what Ross is just talking mm -hmm. about. Yeah. So this is a lot of this is going to be scientifically based. It really is. So, but you have that feeling. So, so where I was going is that what if, what if, what if, what if? You could tap into this 
and use it on purpose to your benefit. Wonder if you're in business. Let's say you have a, a big contract and, or, a, or a big proposal that's out there. Wonder if you could use this super bond to connect with that person you're trying to earn their business with. Or better yet, wonder if you could connect them the night before in their dreams. Sounds pretty outrageous. I know it does. Well, I can tell you everything that I've just described, you can do. Children have a distinctive connection with their mother. After all, they gestated within the womb for nine months, building that connection. They're entangled together, physically and energetically. Identical twins or twins themselves have the connection with each other. They can finish, finish each other's sentences. They know when something's happened to the other one. All of these things, these little things that we call superstitious, coincidence, quirky, happens with twins. Married couples, after a certain amount of time, become synced together. Well, how does that work then? Because if science says that's impossible and it's happening, then there's something there. And in most cases, science says something's impossible only because they don't know how it works. So for example, in 1927, when entanglement was first theorized by Niels Bohr, Einstein admitted it happened, but it wasn't plausible, saying that it was just spooky action at a distance. He said it's there, but because he couldn't prove it, he relatively kind of dismissed it. He gave it a kind of a weird connotation. And that was in a way of him making fun of, 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 of Bohr. But with better technology at our fingertips today, later on, science has proven that entanglement does exist. You can, you can call it magic. You can call it witchcraft. You can call it science. You can call it whatever you want. You can call it hokum, BS, crap. It doesn't mean that it's not there. It just means that you choose to ignore it or in today's topic not utilize it whatever the case when that phone rings and you pick it up and and you say i was just thinking about you entangled thoughts reached out your energy reached out because generally in most cases you are already close to that person so you're entangled those Akka cords are connected. And there are ways of severing the Akka cords as well on purpose and then reconnecting them because you can be entangled with somebody who you really don't want to be entangled with. And that's just simply a process. Let's say that you have a business. And we're going to say uh, it's a retail business. Okay. So kind of a brick and mortar. So you have a store for and you have a store and you need more business. Did you know that you can reach out and bring business to you? Attract business through the door? It's not a hard process. The problem that most people have is that they go through the process, they, they, they get a, a, a snippet of how this works. So they go through the process and they go, and they're, and they're reaching out for business, for abundance. And then something manifests. And they're disappointed. Oh, well, that wasn't worth all the effort, they say. And in my mind, I'm like, what did you just say? Do you know what you just did? You dismissed it. You dismissed the fact that the universe, through the flow of the infinity matrix, that reflected your original desire, wasn't good enough. So in return, it says back, oh, what you're vibrating here is unappreciation. Got it. So because uh, you thought I was actually looking for something a little bigger, a little better, hmm, 
okay? So the infinity matrix only knows energy. We've said this over and over and over again. So it basically read from you, your transmission, your vibration was simply, you don't want it. I sent you something and you dismissed it. You complained about it. Instead of, yes, this works. Let me try it again. And then something bigger comes and then something even bigger comes and then something even bigger and bigger comes. Or it doesn't. I like to think of it something sometimes as, uh, you know, find a penny, pick it up. Now it will bring me good luck. Versus find a penny, leave it there. All the day you'll have despair. You need to appreciate and show gratitude for even the littlest of things. So some of you probably have memories of this. So one of the metaphysical practices that you can use in your daily business routines is meditation. Meditation is a technique of focusing your attention on a single object, thought, or a sensation, and letting go of any distractions or judgments. So, sorry, I'm getting some um, outside noises. I don't know if you can hear me or not. Can you hear that, Gary? I don't hear any background noise, no. All right, good. Sorry. So something's going on outside. So meditation can help you calm your mind. It can reduce stress. It can enhance your concentration and access your intuition. You can meditate in the morning before starting your workday, during breaks, or at the end of the day to relax and reflect. You can also meditate on specific questions or challenges that you face in your business, listening to the inner guidance that emerges from your subconscious mind. And I know there's many of you out there that have kind of this weird idea or connotation of meditation and it's all woo-woo and such, but I'm telling you, top executives, top athletes all meditate because they understand how it affects their thinking. It affects their day. It affects their life. It affects their business. Another metaphysics practice is that we can use in daily routines is visualization. Visualization is a technique of creating mental images of what you want to achieve or experience and feeling the emotions that are associated with them. Visualization can help you clarify your goals, motivate yourself, boost your confidence, and attract positive outcomes. You can visualize in the morning as part of your meditation session or any time during the day when you need a dose of inspiration or an affirmation of some sort. You can also visualize the steps that you need to take to reach your goals and the obstacles that you may encounter along the way. So now you're prepared. Your, your subconscious mind will take you through 90% of any type of uh, barrier that may show up. And that 10% is no big thing because everything else you're like, I'm prepared. Oh, yeah, I got this. And a third met metaphysics practice is that you can use in daily business routines is using processes for declarations, our favorite, rather than affirmations. Affirmations are, are kind of like stating a wish of what you would like, as opposed to declarations are a command to invoke that which you desire. So of those two, which do you feel would be more powerful? Repeating positive statements that in most cases the subconscious mind doesn't even believe? Or commanding reality to bend to your will, creating the reality into existence? Declarations will change your negative beliefs. They're going to improve your self-esteem. They're going to overcome your fears and manifest your dreams. Imagine every morning declaring your day. Imagine throughout the day, whenever you encounter a challenge or a setback, declaring the outcome. 
you can declare the qualities that you want to develop and demonstrate and see it in your business, such as creativity and leadership and integrity and excellence. Declare them. Pull them into your reality. Create them. And besides these practices, there are others that you can explore and experiment with. And, and, you know, and we were going to do this in some of our upcoming live streams. You know, the power of journaling, for example, writing down your thoughts and your feelings and your insights and experiences that can help you process your emotions and gain clarity, express yourself, and learn from your mistakes. The most powerful, and we've done so many live streams on this, is gratitude. Practicing gratitude can help you appreciate what you have, acknowledge your achievements, cultivate a positive attitude, and attract more abundance. And then there's the secrets of synchronicity. Paying attention to meaningful coincidences or signs and portals that can help you recognize opportunities. Follow your intuition and align with your purpose. Even utilizing energy healing, using techniques such as Reiki and acupuncture or crystals can help you keep balance in your energy fields and clear those blockages and heal wounds, both physically and emotionally, and enhance your overall well being. All of these. These are some of the metaphysical aspects of conducting business. Regardless of what kind of business, you can incorporate these into any profession and also into your personal life. By incorporating these techniques into your daily routines, you can tap into your inner wisdom, unleash your potential, and achieve greater success and greater satisfaction in your workflow. You just have to want to. You just have to understand that this exists and it can be learned. And then if you find yourself plateauing, you'll know deep down, deep, deep down, the universe is boundless and you can't get blocked by an earning ceiling because there is no ceiling. If you can't get past a particular revenue gain, then it's time to venture within because it's very possible that there are some mental barriers and it's just a matter of getting with somebody and discovering what they are and to rewrite your future. You know, there's, a, there's an adage that says, believe it and you will achieve it. And whether you feel that you deserve it or not, Declare today your intention for 2024. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be grandiose. It does, however, have to be started. And doing it now really makes a difference, a big difference. By understanding the metaphysical aspect intensifies the energy that you project and begins a thread in this cosmic tapestry of existence let's make it yeah happen. you know and, and one of the things you all can do as well to to kind of accelerate this is get around other like-minded people that think and have conversations that are similar to this type of stuff to kind of keep the 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 fire stoked right and to expand on it and 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 go into directions and get percept perspectives that you may be, wouldn't have had. And one of the things we we offer is a um, what we call a virtual roundtable or VRT as we call it. It's a free live, uh, live uh, Zoom call where it's kind of like a networking, kind of like speed dating um, without the sales, without the, um, you know, the, the pickup lines or anything like that, but more about connecting and collaborating. And uh, it, so it's called a virtual roundtable, and we offer that. And we have some coming up. If you're interested in joining us on a virtual roundtable, um, it's by invitation only. 
And so uh, if you do want to get an invite for that, just drop a hashtag VRT in the comments. That's hashtag VRT. And one of us will get back to you and send you a DM with the actual VR, the RSVP link to get uh, on upcoming um, VRT uh, events. They're amazing. They're really great uh, connection builders. Um, uh, you get lots of insight. There's no selling, no pitches at all. Promise you that. Absolutely not. It's a safe environment for entrepreneurs to get together to build relationship and collaboration. So hashtag VRT in the comments if you want to uh, find out how to join us on upcoming ones. And, and before you could truly apply metaphysics in uh, to get the edge in business success, you need to get a grasp on understanding the structure of your reality. And in a business setting, true success, it lies in the depth of a reality you can never fully comprehend. And that's the beauty and the appeal that through running your own business, it's a mysterious yet awe-inspiring event, right? sometimes daily, sometimes hourly. <laughs> and, and the more you dedicate yourself to the business you have, the more you start to realize that it can be a true catalyst for expanding your reality beyond the leads you get, beyond the sales you make, and even the empire that you build. Because when you dedicate yourself to expanding beyond business mastery, you acknowledge that there are infinitely deeper and more profound dimensions that you can tap into. And you can apply, and, and by applying metaphysical uh, concepts, philosophies, and practices, you'll start to elevate your company and your team and the team energetic levels of uh, to, to unlimited potential, where every interaction and outcome actually holds the potential for decoding real secrets to your perception and experience of reality. Metaphysics invites you to explore the interconnectedness of people, processes, and results on a level beyond the physical, okay, as we talked about before with the Akka chords and things like that, okay? It, it really is hard to deny that we live and function in a matrix that contains infinite layers of existence far beyond what we all notice on the surface level of awareness. Do you agree? With metaphysics, the nature of your business reality becomes more fluid. It becomes ever-changing with ever-changing dynamics that are embraced instead of being stuck by societal collective beliefs, emotions, and experiences. You get to navigate a landscape that's boundless. And the resources and the solutions you and your team bring to the marketplace has immense impact. Far more than maybe you, you can even realize. So applying metaphysics is a little talked about key that will lead you to mastery and continue to unlock your next levels of success and impact. So start with embracing and understanding leadership consciousness. It's a good place to start. And what I mean by that is imagine yourself fully aware of your consciousness as a leader, because as a business owner, you are a leader in many ways that you may not realize. So as a conscious leader, contemplate the deeper meaning of your company's existence. And as you dive into the depths of your mind and your vision, you begin to question what it truly means to, to guide a thriving business through the chaos and the storm of the world around you. And how does consciousness shape the reality you and your team experience? Start to think about that, that stuff. Right. Do that kind of deep inquiry, because those kinds of deep inquiries will lead you into exploring the intricate relationships between leadership consciousness and organizational success. Consciousness is the essence of your being as a leader, 
as an entrepreneur, as a business owner. And encompassing your self-awareness, your mindset, your values, and your vision. And it determines how you perceive challenges, how you connect with your team, and how you nurture your company's culture. So leadership consciousness transcends traditional metrics and traditional management tactics. It represents your energetic influence, how you show up each day what you emanate through your presence, through your words, through your actions. And ultimately, it's about who you are being day to day in your business life. Now, here's a little secret. You ready? A little secret. The more you explore and apply metaphysics into your business, the more you realize a profound and direct connection between mindset, personal development, and business success. Your consciousness as a business owner shapes how your team perceives priorities, how they connect with the company vision, and how the business ultimately fulfills its highest potentials. And this mind business, actually means mind business spirit sandwich, okay, suggests that your application of metaphysics can contribute to how much you thrive and how fast you attain and expand beyond business mastery, whatever that means for you. So brace yourself to enter the metaphysical realm of business mastery. I'm going to share with you six fun and creative ways you can apply metaphysics into your business to get the edge in business success. All right? And these can be adapted for yourself if you're a solopreneur or if you have a large organization. So it may take some creativity to make some ad adaption. So take notes, have fun, and make sure you come back and tell us the impact they've had for your business success. We love to hear those stories. We get them all the time and we never get tired of them. All right. So first one is group guided meditation meetings. Now, Ross talked about doing meditation as a part of your practice and stuff, but to do it as a group, you get the collective thought around it. Create, here's how you would do it. I'm gonna give you some, I'm gonna give you specifics, okay? Create or have someone create a guided meditation for you and your team to do together in a team meditation meeting. Okay, a, a, the, the meditation should lead you, uh, lead you all into envisioning the quantum strands of energy and, con, and interconnection and interconnectivity between you, your coworkers, your customers your product, your vendors, basically everything. People, processes, and outcomes in your business and organization. And once the meditation is done, have a roundtable discuss discussion on what came up for each person and any new insights that were gained. And then take and apply anything that's relevant to your business growth and turn it into a team project for implementation. It's an amazing team building process and it's amazing um, breaking out of boundaries and, and, and limited thought patterns and, and really growing uh, your business in a powerful way with the team that you have and having them a part of that process. Okay. Second is energetic vision board. Yes, I said vision board. Are you tired of hearing about vision boards yet? <laughs> okay. All right. This is different. Okay, this is different. Um, instead of doing just a regular vision board, try this out. Okay. I want you, first of all, go through a reflective meditation and envision your current business situation, any challenges or whatever's going on, whatever it looks like from a mundane surface level perspective. Okay, just the black and white of it. 
what are your products? What are your services? Who are your employees? What's the organizational structure? What's the brand image? That kind of stuff, right? Just kind of reflect on those things. Once you've gone through those and just kind of acknowledge them, right? Not with any intention of changing, just acknowledge them. Then sink deeper into that meditation to start perceiving your business energetically. And start to tap into how do things feel, right? And start to feel where is the energy flowing or blocked for you, right? Or the flow of the business, right? What limiting beliefs or assumptions seem to be shaping your decisions, What invisible potentials and possibilities hover at the edges that are just waiting to emerge? Okay, and then do that process. And after this meditation, go ahead and get some magazines, printouts, textures, words, whatever you need to start creating two contrasting vision boards. Okay, first one is current perspective board, okay? So the current business perspective. And this would represent all the literal, tangible aspects of your business, okay? The status quo stuff, right? The colors might be dull, images might look static. This shows what what meets the eye about your business from a conventional view, okay? It's, it's, it's not the sexy, great, amazing, vibrant part of it. It's just what's the, the nuts and bolts of it. Okay, and that's your current perspective board. Then create an, an energetic perspective. And this board contains visual representations of what you sensed energetically and intuitively about your business's deeper and highest potential. So make sure there's vibrant colors. Make sure it's energetic in the imagery and and there's flowing designs, um, liberating concepts. And this board gives form to all the previously intangible energies and possibilities you feel ready to manifest. That's what it should represent. And then contrast, the contrast between the boards makes the metaphysical concepts visually tangible. You start to see what, you know, the status quo is. You start through metaphysics, how you can create that other reality. And then journal and or discuss. So journal if you're on your own and discuss if you're in a group. Discuss new insights about your core business identity. From that, that arise from that, right? Any unlocked potential and vision that transcends existing um, assumptions or constraints. What are they? Have that conversation. And then use the boards to give form to this inner sensing, revealing exciting growth directions that are centered around energy and your essence instead of ego and limitations. Really fun exercise, really, really great to do. All right. And then the next one is sparking innovation meetings. So how you do this is you would schedule a a team meeting and set the intention of the meeting to spark creative creative collisions and out-of-the-box thinking, right? Where minds come together and just kind of See what sparks from that. That's the intention. So this means dropping any linear logical modes of analysis that that often comes into play in the business meetings. Leave Spock at the door. (laughs) Start play, start playful warm-up exercises like imagining impossible scenarios related to business innovations. Right? Like, what would business look like on Mars? Okay. Just, just really just kind of play with that. Right? Or how might the ancient druids have structured workplaces? 
right? Uh, we had an interview uh, series recently with someone who who studies a lot of druid stuff, and and if you if you if you think about what what would a business work, work workplace look like if if druids were were structuring that workplace, right? Yeah, it's silly, right? But that's what will get the minds primed for flexible thinking. Then once you've done a few of those, then in rapid fire style, take creative leaps, take turns bouncing random business ideas and, and, um, and someone else makes weird metaphorical connections without judgment, analysis or context to that business idea. Right? It's about speed of association, building on spontaneity. Again, it may take some practice, take some time to get into this, but once you get into doing this, it becomes a very fun and, and, and um, enlightening experience for everyone involved, right? And at certain points, you'll notice patterns will emerge, right? Patterns will emerge and clusters of innovations around common themes will arise. Some will be intriguing and even viable. And others will be wildly impractical, but lead to other possibilities and just add to the fun of the experience. And after a period of time, stop and discuss which innovative sparks seem most compelling to bring into reality. And then collectively as a group, Vote on your favorite sparks that showed glimmers of genius or shed light on previously unconsidered opportunities. And then evaluate. Evaluate what made those particular ideas especially disruptive while reviewing the themes and standout contributions within it, right? And then once you've done that, Again, if you're in a team, ask for volunteers or assign teams to actively work on developing the most resonant sparks into more tangible prototypes or business plan sketches. Okay? And if you're a solopreneur, then maybe you hire on a team uh, through a, you know, virtual assistants or um, you know, contractors to do that for you. Right? And these are great sessions to get your um, to get your business coach or consultants to be a part of also, because they will often bring a fresh outsider perspective that could propel your business success into the stratosphere. And that's why they get paid the big bucks. <laughs> right? Okay. So next one is creating a metaphysical Lego verse. You heard me. I said Lego, okay, <laughs> right? and not Lego my ego. I mean Lego, the building blocks. All right. Provide the each team member with a variety of Lego blocks and mini figures of different colors, different occupations, different accessories, just randomly, right? And then set the intention for for these to become the raw materials for instantly prototyping new business ventures or initiatives through hands-on visualization instead of cerebral analysis and long-term planning cycles. Okay, then once everybody's got their stuff, then start with a quick centering activity whatever that is for you and simple, to get into a flow state, letting go of judgment and getting playful. I encourage everyone, right, to start, I would encourage everyone to start grabbing any um, logo, any extra Lego pieces and letting intuition guide what they pick instead of strategically thinking right? That they're going to, we want them to create freely, snapping together configurations, exp um, you know, expressively in the moment, incorporating the mini fig figures as they, as needed. And you'll find that within minutes, vibrant Lego prototypes, 
may emerge and express new visions. Right? Team members should take turns presenting their model verbally through imag or through imaginary role play skits, right? With the minifigures, right? So they can kind of do a little um, puppet show, if you will, right? And again, make it fun. The hands-on building uh, will access everyone's visual spatial creativity, accessing different parts of the brain that are otherwise dormant during business um, functions, right? And it'll spark innovations that just can't be conceived through linear business planning methods. Just can't. And when everyone's do done, again, discuss the, the very concepts that show up common themes that may have emerged and explore the viable new marketing opportunities. Again, really fun, creative ways to use um, uh, metaphysics in, in boosting your business. Okay, now check this one out. How about doing business tarot or oracle card readings? Okay. Um, one this uh, a version of this. My um, I used to run a martial arts school, and um, the owner and I we used to do the the uh, something similar to using the I Ching, and um, you know we would uh, uh, we would just kind of have the I Ching book and just kind of flip through and just wherever it stopped, we'd use that and then have that reflect on different aspects of our business. So I'll, here's how I'm going to share it with you, though. All right, so start with a discussion around how business often approaches. Um, dilemmas rationally. I mean, have that conversation just so people understand, right? But tapping into our intuition through modalities like tarot cards can allow alternate insights to emerge, right? Gets us out of that, 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 that conditioned box. Then invite the team members to formulate a specific question around a current business decision that they're seeking clarity on. For example, uh, should we develop this new product line? Okay, then pull out a deck of tarot cards or oracle cards. If you don't have any, obviously got to go get some, right? Um, and then attune everyone's energy through any kind of centering technique. Okay, it could be as simple as just taking a few deep breaths while holding intention on the question at hand. So it's simple as that. Okay. Then team members would each draw a card intuitively and then share what symbolic meanings they get from the card as they look at it. And then the rest of the team members then can offer perspectives, noting cues that show up around consequences, blind spots, limiting beliefs, etc. Notice what goes on in the conversation. And then facilitate a group discussion about any patterns that were noticed across the cards and then make note of any and all insights. All right? And after everyone's pulled a card and gone through its interpretation, discuss any overall takeaways, action steps, and key learnings around how opening business discussion with symbolic, intuitively sourced visual input can set an expansive Insight rich tone before rational debate. We start from the place of possibility. It's one of the things we do in our virtual roundtables. We start from a place of possibility. It's possible. Right? And the insights uh, that, are ex that are accessed through this method, through this practice, can also help you to consider far reaching implications and stay um, and, and, and keep you aligned with greater ecosystems that are needed for charting your company's direction. It's a very expansive way of doing it, right? This metaphysical activity does require some vulnerability, right? Because you got to put yourself out there and you got to interpret something. And so, the, so it's important to set a foundation of a safe place. It's vital, right? Letting everybody know that, hey, whatever comes up, it's okay. There's no judgment. You got to put that, you got to set that safe place and then have some fun with it. And you can even schedule meetings for every full moon to make it more mystical and fun, 
all right? It will open space for the kind of whole mind breakthrough thinking that establishes your business as the visionary in your industry. Okay, now for the final one, all right? Call it self plan. So the the future self pe uh, pen pal, right? future self pen pal. Now this one is especially useful if you've ever found yourself getting lost in day to day details and losing connection with your passion, purpose, or vision. Right? It also allows us to tap into guidance from a future self. All right. So. To create a future self pen pal, you'll need to get comfortable and imagine stepping into the shoes of your older, future, wiser self. And see what you've created in your business five, 10 years from now. Feel it, see it, hear it, experience that as much as you can. What does your empowered and successful presence feel like then? Okay, and then take a few moments to really imagine what it will be like in all areas of your life. And then grab a pen and your journal and start writing as if you are having a conversation between your present day and your future empowered and successful self. Present day self asks questions like, what key advice do you have for me? Or what am I not seeing now that you have better perspective on? Or how did you navigate the challenges that are ahead? Those kinds of questions, interviewing type questions. Then respond from your future self and share reflections like what you wish you knew And, and that you only gained through experience across time. Be open for unconscious downloads around clarity of your vision, your leadership, uh, leadership tips and lessons, innovative business models, and whatever else bubbles up into your consciousness. And remember that this future self, your spiritually evolving life force, right? That's our acronym for self. This future self has an elevated vantage point through trial and error. And after a while, after doing that interview, after journaling with that, that correspondence, come back into the room in the here and now, and on a separate page in your journal, write down anything you want to from the future self correspondence. Things like, what surprised you? Did common themes emerge that you should take note of to guide your strategic priorities? And by tapping into your future empowered successful self, you may find that you are able to be to um, you're able to to gather some north uh, some north star insights, right? Some some true north insights that inspire you beyond current day short-term noise. And then using just these, just these fun and easy six practices will give your business the edge on your competition and ensure your success in any economy. All right. I hope you took some good notes. That's our stream for today. Until next time. We dare you to be exceptional. And the only way to do that is to implement what you learn and learn from what you implement. And before we go real quick, remember, if you want to join us on the virtual roundtable, hashtag VRT. If you want to join us in our private groups, the links are, are pinned to the top of this uh, comments. And um, we will see you next time. Thank you, everyone. We'll see you next week. We've got a great interview coming up uh, next week because it's going to be all about Christmas. And we're going to talk about some of the uh, the history of Christmas. We're going to talk about some of the traditions of Christmas. You don't want to miss this. This the woman is amazing. Gary and I were just like, if you look at the interview, you see us. We were just unbelievably just in awe. So you're going to love it. So we'll see you then. Um, everybody have a great day. Bye bye. Be well, everyone.